today we're going to be talking about these, the Aperture B7C Multicolor Smart Bulb. Let's get undone. What's happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and it's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you. So today's video is unscripted. Normally I have a very thorough script to go over, but I thought today, just to mix it up, it'd be fun if we didn't script it. And I haven't even done all the tests yet. I'm gonna do some of them right here during this video. I've got my notes and some specs in front of me here. There is an inordinate amount of noise coming from outside, so I apologize for that. We're just gonna motor right on through it. And there is one pesky fly that keeps flying around in the studio that's driving me crazy as well. Anyway, so today we're talking about the B7C from Aperture. Now, I first saw this thing at NAB and I was really excited about it. I think the design has changed a little bit since then. Right now I've got it on purple. Um, but what comes in the box, we'll start with that and then we'll talk about some construction. I'll give you some specs and then we'll do some tests. So in the box, you only get two things. You get the light itself, the, the bulb, not this base plate. This is just a cheap uh, little base plate thing that I got from Home Depot, which I think it was like $2. You can use one of these if you wanna, that's a really annoying sound, eh? You can use one of these if you want to have like a little tripod for your light bulb if you want, but obviously it works better in fixtures. Anyway, all you get in the box is the light and then you get this little felt bag that you can keep it in. Right now I've got a little Philips LED bulb in that we're gonna compare it to to see if the color quality is that different versus just some cheap LED. But yeah, you get this bag and you get the box. In terms of the basic specs, there's three buttons on it, one for increasing and decreasing the brightness, two different buttons for that, and then a power button to turn it off and on. And then there's a whole bunch of combination buttons that you can press for you know activating the Bluetooth mode so you can control it with the app, for resetting things, for changing it between AC and DC mode. Note about that, by the way. So there's two different power modes for it. There's AC, which obviously is gonna work if you plug it into you know your, your regular outlet and using it in where you would typically use a light bulb. But if you wanna use it on battery power, something that would require DC, you have to switch it over. So make sure you have that set up correctly. I think by default, it's set to AC and that's how it works from there. And then it charges using the same like lamp socket that you would plug it into, which is great. There is an internal battery. I think it's like 1300 milliamps and it'll run you for just over an hour on full power. And they say 20 plus hours on minimum brightness. I didn't, I didn't let it run down for 20 plus hours, but the just over an hour thing seems pretty fair at full brightness. And you can even use the lamp control. So if you have like a switch on your lamp, you can use it to turn the light on. Right now the light's turned on by the bulb. So if I turn the bulb off using the power button, now if I flick the switch on the lamp, it turns the light on there. I just don't think that you can turn it off with the switch if it's turned on. It just switches over to battery power, which might actually be a great thing if you're worried about, you know, power getting cut, at least your, your practical lights will still work. But if you wanna charge it, then you're gonna have to have the switch on, obviously. Okay, as far as the rest of the specs go, the color accuracy is rated quite good. It's like right up there again with the Aperture MC. You're getting like a 95, 96 on the CRI TLCI and the SSI for tungsten, I believe is 85 and it's 74 for daylight. And it also uses that same Bluetooth mesh thing that the other Aperture products do as far as the Sidus link in terms of expanding your range. And it's passively cooled in case you're wondering, there's no fan noise or anything like that coming out of it. And I don't hear any kind of whine or anything either. It's essentially silent. While we have it running here, let's do a quick sort of RGB test and check and see with a low intensity because you can set it between zero, 100% and 1% increments. Let's see if we get any kind of flickering on it. I presume that we won't because seldom do with any aperture stuff. Like I said, I'll do some of these tests on camera here and we'll do some different frame rates and some shutter speed options. So we'll do like really low shutter speeds, really high shutter speeds, low and high frame rates. I'm not seeing any issues at all there, so that's great. Let's actually test and see if the spec on the Lux at one meter is accurate and see what result that we get with that. So I've set it to 5,600 Kelvin and we'll jack the intensity all the way up to 100% brightness. And if you wanna measure something one meter away and you have an inches tape measure, that is 39 and a third inches. So I'm gonna set the light here. The beam angle on this is 160 degrees, which is another thing obviously to factor based on the power of a light would be the beam angle. So maybe I'll I'll try it both from the side and then also from, from straight on, although generally you wouldn't use a light bulb in that fashion, but we'll do it just for fun at full power, 5,600 Kelvin, and we're getting 64 lux. And now I'll point it at the light meter and see what we get. So now we get 117, 
And on their spec sheet, they say that you can expect 110 at 5,500 Kelvin. So say that's pretty close. If you want maximum output, it seems like 6,500 Kelvin will get you a bit more lux than 5,500. But the color temperature range, capable range, is from 2,000 Kelvin to 10,000. So you should get your peak output in and around 6,000 Kelvin. So daylight should be a good result here. So we're seeing pretty accurate. It just depends, obviously, on the angle in which you approach the bulb which is natural for light bulbs. Now, while we have this set up, let's go ahead and check the color temperatures of those different, actually, I don't need to be that far away, but let's check the color temperatures of those different presets. So in the manual, it says that there's six different presets, but I've only been seeing five. It says that they range from 2000, 2700, 3200, 4300, 5500, and 6500. So let's just double tap the power button until we can find the warmest one. Okay, so that one, let's get a reading on that from like right here. So the warmest one I'm measuring at 1800 Kelvin. Now let's press it, we'll get a different one here. And now I'm getting 2600 Kelvin. This one, it definitely got brighter. 3500 Kelvin, 6000 Kelvin, 8400 Kelvin, and then back to the red one. So I'll put those on the screen. But yeah, I only measured five different steps and they don't exactly seem to be matching what they say in the in the manual. But instead, let's see if we actually dial it in to exactly what we want, how we do there. So let's set it to 5500 even uh, using the app and see what we read for that. 5700, so that's not too bad. So if you set it with the app, you can be precise. I just don't know that the presets are gonna give you exactly what you want. Normally I don't really like apps, but the Aperture app is really good. It's smooth. I'm using it on Android too, by the way, so it's not just a, an Apple is the only one that works kind of thing. The performance is great. I've really been enjoying it lately. They've definitely converted me into liking apps when it comes to the light stuff. I wanna compare it to the Aperture MC to see which one comes out brighter. So I'm gonna do this at exactly three feet away. So 360 lux at three feet. Apologies to my metric community. And we'll do the same thing with this one with the light bulb pointed at it three feet away. 340 lux. So I would say based on the variance that could be created here, we are within a similar realm. Let's get these lights on in here actually. We are within a similar realm to the Aperture MC in terms of output, as well as in terms of customization with the colors, app usages, everything. It's, it's very, very similar. The only difference I guess would be is that you can control the Aperture MC from the device, where the bulbs you can stick into a socket and they obviously fit better in terms of you know, practical fixtures and that kind of thing. It's heavier than you'd think uh, in the hand. The buttons are good. They're, I mean, they're like, I don't know, they're reasonable. They're like little plastic flicky kind of things, but they, they don't take up much space. The rest of the design I think is nice and it feels it feels solid and well-made. And I like this diffuser on the top as well. It's not, uh, it's not brutal. As you can see, I'm pointing at myself right now. It actually does a decent job of making kind of a, a glowy light for what would really be just a source like directly on your face. I, I think it looks pretty good without any modification, but let's go ahead and modify them up with some different light setups and see how it looks in practical use. Oh, one more thing I should mention while I'm at it regarding the temperature of the unit. I find that I had these running for quite a while and they do get warm to the touch. I would say uncomfortable to hold if you have them running for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, not to where they're gonna burn you. It's not like when you take a light bulb out and you like burn your hands if you touch it if it's running. You can still handle these. And if you needed to unscrew one quickly and put in another socket or change it out, you'd be able to do that without trouble, but they do feel like they get up into that like 40, 50 degrees Celsius level where if you held it for a while, you might get like a low temperature burn, but it doesn't burn you to just hold it. But it's definitely a little bit uncomfortable. But like I said, it's enough that you can move the light or change it around without burning yourself. So I think that that's, that's fine. All right, so here's one pretty simple setup. I've got both bulbs working. I've got one here just, just on the edge of the frame so you could see it, and another one here in the lamp. And both of them are set to 100% power, and both of them are set to 2700 Kelvin, so a very warm light. The white balance on the camera hasn't changed, so it's set for more of a daylight setting, so these are gonna come out very warm. And if I turn them both off, you can see that it's pretty much pitch black in here without them, and we'll turn them back on. So, I don't know, this could be something where you're like, oh, you're writing in your diary kind of scene or whatever. The idea is just to see that it looks like the lamp is doing all the work and you could sort of motivate it with a practical. Now obviously this would work a lot easier if you had a full tungsten source and then the lamp was just there just kind of doing a little bit which we could see if I turn off just one like this 
that would be just what the lamp's doing, and then you would actually control your light with the, with a tungsten source. But I wanted to show you what it looks like if that light's a bit of a key light too. And then I'll pull the color chart in here so we can see how their their color quality is in this. Oh, I'm gonna call from FedEx. Is this a new camera coming into Canada for the first time? Okay, thank you. Or you know, maybe it's a getting a call from FedEx scene because they won't release your cameras. I still don't have the A7S III, guys. It's like stuck in customs somewhere. Anyway, what were we talking about? Color checker. <laughs> this has been a heck of a video. Aperture, I love you guys. I'm sorry that my Aperture video is such a such a disaster. I'm having fun here. Hopefully the viewers are having fun. Uh, it's just it's been it's been quite the day. I think we can all relate to that. Anyway, now I'm holding the color checker. So we can kind of get a sense. What am I doing here right now? What, what, what is this proving? Anyway, the moral of the story is, I think that this looks nice. Obviously I wish that that was more powerful, but again, use a proper key light in this case. I don't think the bulb is gonna count as a key light, but I really like what's going on with this lamp over here. I think that it looks quite nice. Okay, let's do something a little bit more reasonable. So there's these light heads that you can get, like this one here that has tilt control and an umbrella holder, and it has a light socket and a switch on it. So it's kind of perfect if you want to adapt you know, regular bulbs into some kind of like lighting setup. So I'm gonna stick one of these in here and it'll give us both bulbs and then I'm gonna put them behind an umbrella. I have just like a 30 inch, I think it is, basic white umbrella and we're gonna shoot through that and see what it looks like as a key light. Okay, quick little disclaimer during this setup, while this does work, flick the switch and both lights come on. I have been getting some kind of quirky results like it's switching between AC power and not on AC power. And I'm not able to do a charging indicator test, so I don't know if it's just that I'm using a cheap little splitter, but this may not be an advised configuration. But it's still gonna be useful for this test to see if we can double these up as a key light. But I'm not officially endorsing this configuration at the moment. Anyway, let's give it a test and actually stick it behind the umbrella. Okay, so they're both set to 5600 Kelvin and they're both at 100% intensity and I do not think that this is sufficient as a key light. I even have it a little bit closer than I have my regular key light over here. And uh, it's just not cutting it. So that, there's our answer to that. I suppose the only thing left to check would be is how the color quality impacts against using just like a regular LED to see, you know, what, what kind of advantages you might see if you actually did light yourself with it uh, straight on. So let's go ahead and ditch this whole umbrella operation because you can't use this as a key light. Okay, so for our last comparison, I have the bulb right here at 100% power, 5600 Kelvin again. And I'm gonna compare it against this Philips, actually we'll set it to 5000 to keep things even. So it's 5000, 100% power. And the draw on these apparently is seven watts according to the box, but it also says in the spec that it can go up to 12 watts, I guess, under certain loads, which should make it comparable to this LED bulb from Philips that I have, which is eight watts for 5000 Kelvin. So we're gonna see how that looks. I'll just do a quick color chart check here. So we'll get some color in the frame and a little bit of skin tone. I know that it's dark. And then I'm gonna switch out the bulb for this Philips bulb so we can see, I guess, some benefits that come from using a $70 light bulb versus a, I don't know, I think these are like $9 or something like that. Um, because yeah, that's the price of these, $70 US or $99 Canadian. But obviously color quality is important when it comes to video. So let's go ahead and switch these out. Okay, so now we have that Philips bulb there, which, right away I can see is not the same color on my skin at all. So, you know, whether or not it's incorrect in its color temperature or not, or just the just the rendering that's coming out of it, I've always found these bulbs to kind of give a bit more of like a greeny kind of yellow vibe, but we'll see how it looks. I'll put these side by side on the screen so you can compare them. Got the checker in the shot there. Let me get the shadows out of the shot. Okay. Look at that white, the white chip. It's definitely a little bit off, so. Also, as I briefly touched on, they have the same effects that the Aperture MC and other recent Aperture products have. So you could also maybe stick them in like a fireplace in terms of the fire mode if you want to do that. But they've got other things like cop car and this is the party mode where it cycles through the RGB, faulty bulb, lightning, all the ones that we've seen over and over again recently. So they're there if that works better for your creative purposes. But I would say the ideal usage for these is probably to use them as color accurate practicals in your in-scene fixtures. So just sort of a better option if you're gonna put a bulb in the shot, might as well be color accurate while you're at it. I also think that you could use it as a viable option for a smaller studio house lights, converting them over to color accurate if that's something that's important to you. I know that often house lights are kind of like um, strip lights, like LED you know, strip bulbs and that kind of thing. And that's probably more 
economical for a lot of output. But if you run a smaller studio and you have positions for little bulbs elsewhere, this could be convenient if you want to maintain your color accuracy, not just when you're under your key light, but all the time when you're doing other things, or even for just maybe some BTS or social. I could see it being useful for that, as well as still having the option to set it to some kind of mood, you know, ambience kind of light. If you want to work and you want them all to be purple, well, now it's doubling down for that purpose. Overall, they appear to do a good job. They're easy to use, well-made, and I love that you can just stick them in a light socket and charge them that way. I can't really speak to the longevity aspect of them because I just got them, so I can't tell you how many hours of life you're going to get out of them. But I can say that my track record with Aperture has been stellar, where I don't think I've had a single light from them fail or have really any issues with it at all. So they have my confidence just because they're Aperture products, even though I haven't tested them long term yet. I guess nobody really has. The only tip I have for you when you get yours is to make sure that you set the hue to 285. Multicolor smart, smart bulb. This is called multicolor smart bulb. Smart bulb. But I would say outside of that, I mean, they're... they're <laughs> but in some, this lamp, it's wobbly. I, I have a strong feeling this video is going to have to get thrown out. But that's going to be it for me. Hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, try setting the playback speed to 75%. Yeah, all right. I'm done.